Good morning, Year Two, and thank you for joining our next maths lesson this morning. So, this morning in maths, we are going to be using arrays. And if you're sat there wondering, what's an array? An array is a group of shapes or a group of objects organized into a number of rows. So, going across and columns going down. So, we're going to be looking at those this morning. So, if you could please pause the video here and write the short date 13.1.21 and the learning objective use arrays. Well done you two. So first of all this morning, like we have been in our previous lessons, we're going to identify how many groups there are and the amount inside each group. We are going to write a repeated addition to represent the equal groups. We're going to write multiplication using the multiplication symbol again and then Later on in the lesson, you'll be drawing arrays to show the multiplication and, of course, explaining your mathematical thinking throughout the lesson this morning. So, first of all, in our review phase, thinking back to yesterday, on the screen, you will see a true or false question. It says true or false. The first picture, which is bags of apples, equals three times five. And the second picture, again, bags of apples, also equals three times five. So I'd like you to pause the video here and use the STEM sentence, I think it is mm, because, and share your thinking, with either the adult helping you at home or your talk partner in the classroom. Well done, year two. So I'm going to share it with you my thinking now. So I think it is true because three lots of five, which is represented in the first picture with three equal groups, with five apples in each bag, equals 15 apples altogether. I noticed in the second picture that the numbers are represented differently. So this time there are five equal groups with three apples in each group. So we might actually read this as five lots of three, but five lots of three still has the same total, which is 15 red apples. So as we know of multiplication, it can be, it is, sorry, it is commutative. So we can write it as three times five, which is represented in this first picture, or we can write it as five times three, okay? And we can write those factor pairs in any order and the total remains the same. Or when doing multiplication, we call this the product. So the product is 15. Brilliant, okay, so moving on to our explore. I'd like you to pause the video here and answer the questions in discussion at home. So there's two questions asking how many counters and the last question says which representations show six. Well done you two. So let's have a look at the first question. How many counters? I can see that there are five counters. Moving on to the next question. Again, how many counters? I can see that there are 10 counters. So what do you notice about the total of counters in each of these questions? Brilliant, we know that double five is 10. Brilliant. And let's have a look, which representations show six? So let's get work through them one at a time. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Brilliant. We know that this representation shows six. Oh, I can see here in this picture that there is one square missing, which means it's an odd number. It's definitely not six, it's one less than six, which is five. Okay, let's have a look here. Oh, I can see three groups of two here. Well, you might look at it as two groups of three. So we can see that there are six squares there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one more than six, so not that one. 
let's have a look at this last representation. Again, you could look at it as three groups of two. You might look at it as two groups of three. So we know that this representation also shows six. Brilliant. Hopefully that was a nice warm up for today's learning year two. Okay, so on your screen, you can see a picture of some cakes. So first of all, looking at this picture of cakes, I'm going to show you how to circle a row. So I'm going to circle a row, and does a row go across? Or does a row go down? Hmm, what do you think here two? Brilliant, the row is going to go across. So I'm going to circle a row. And as I do that, I'd like you to have a think, how many cakes are in each row? I wonder if you can answer using the sentence, there are mm, cakes in each row. Well done, let's say it together. There are two cakes in each row. Well, that was a bit messy from Miss Heard. I need to be really careful that I'm doing this neatly. Brilliant. Okay, so I've circled the rows. And we know there's two cakes in each row. So how many rows are there year two? Wonder if you can answer using the sentence, there are mm rows. Brilliant, set together, there are five rows. So I can see that there are five rows with two cakes in each row. Brilliant, so if we were to show this using repeated addition, what would that number sentence look like? Have a go, either in your book or on your whiteboard. Well done, year two, so let's review that together. So we can see that there are two cakes inside each row. So that is the number that we are going to be adding together every time. So two, you can join in with me, two, add two, add two, add two, add two, equals, hmm, how many cakes are there all together, year two? Well done, there are ten. Brilliant. Okay, so if we were going to represent this using multiplication, what would our calculation look like? Please pause the video here and have a go by yourself. Well done. Because there are one, two, three, four, five rows, that means there are five lots and there's two cakes inside each row, there are five lots of two equals ten. So the product remains the same as the total, okay? So let's say this final sentence together, there are ten cakes. Brilliant. Well done, you two. Okay, we're moving on to step one now. So on your board you can see the questions. 1a says how many pairs are there? So you may choose to either draw the pairs of dots in your book and circle the rows or have a look at the screen and hover your finger being really careful not to touch the screen and draw a row, sorry draw a group around each row and then complete the repeated addition and the multiplication before a sentence using your words. This is the same for 1b. How many stars are there? So just to show my thinking with you, remember we are circling the rows for 1a and 1b to help you. Have fun year two. Well done year two. So we are moving on to our explore now for step two. So now we've got some tarts on the screen. Don't they look delicious? So what I'd like you to do, first of all, is explore this question before I share my thinking with you. We've just discussed rows on an array. I wonder if you can have a look for columns as well this time and just have a conversation about what you notice. 
Well done, year two. So, just going to share with you when using an array, as we've previously explored, you can, let's see if I can change my, my tools, it's a, a bit clearer. That looks quite thick, let's see. You can set, oh, let's try again. <laughs> try to be a bit neater. There we go. It's hard on the mouse pad here too. So we can circle in rows. So how many rows are we going to have here too? Well done. Let's say it together. There are two rows. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got two rows. And how many tarts are in each row? Well done. Let's say it together. There are three tarts in each row. Brilliant. Okay, so whilst we're thinking about our rows, please can you pause the video here and write the repeated addition and the multiplication. You don't have to write this in your book every time if you're at home. You can use your words and just talk about it in conversation at home. Well done. So we can see there are three tarts in each row. That is three, add three, which equals six tarts all together. Okay, so if this is multiplication, we can see that there are two rows of three. So as multiplication, that would be written as two lots of three, or we might read it as two times three equals six. Brilliant. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce you to columns. So I'm going to get a different colour pen if I can, just to show you the columns. So I'm going to um, circle columns. Our columns go down, so they go in the opposite direction to a row. So have a think about how many columns there might be as I'm drawing equal groups around them. I wonder if you can answer using the sentence, there are mm columns. Well done, let's say it together. There are three columns. Well done. Now, how many tarts are inside each column? Well done, let's say it together. There are two tarts inside each column. Brilliant. So having a look now at the columns, I wonder if you could pause the video here and say, all right, it's up to you, the repeated addition and the multiplication for this array looking at the columns. Well done, year two. So let's review that together. So I can see that there are three columns and inside each column there are two tarps. So that means each time we are going to be adding two together. So two, add two, add two equals six, okay? So what do you immediately notice? What's different? What stayed the same in comparison to our last number sentence? Well done. So the amount inside each equal group is different. The number of groups is different, but the total has remained the same. Okay, let's have a think about multiplication. So as we discussed, the number of groups is different. There are now one, two, three equal groups instead of two. So there are three lots of how many tarts inside each group? Brilliant, three lots of two equals six. Fantastic, year two. So what do you notice about this multiplication sentence? Two times three equals six. In comparison to this multiplication, three times two equals six. Please pause the video here and share what you think. Try to use that fancy word that we've been learning. Well done. So the factor pairs have been written in both orders. So they can be written in either order, okay, because multiplication is commutative. I know this can be a bit tricky to say, so shall we say it together? We're going to say multiplication 
is commutative. Okay, let's say it together. Multiplication is commutative. Well done. So that means the factor pairs can be written in either order and the total remains the same. So let's answer how many tarts there are all together. There are six tarts. Well done, year two. Okay, so on your screen now, you can see another array. We're coming back to the pairs. I wonder if you could pause the video here and explore this question at home or in the classroom. First of all, looking at the rows. And secondly, looking at the columns. See if you can have a go first before we go through it together. Well done, year two. Okay, we're going to review it together now. So we're going to begin by looking at rows first. So similar to the tarts, I can see there is one, two rows. Okay, so there are two rows. And what is the amount of pairs inside each row? Well done, there are four pairs inside each row. So that is the number that we're going to be adding together. Four, add four, equals eight. Brilliant. Okay, so if we were looking at the multiplication, how many lots of four can you see? Well done, there is two lots of four, which equals eight. Brilliant, well done. Okay, so we're going to have a look at columns now. I'm going to change the colour pen. How many columns do you think there will be? Brilliant, year two. So there, oh, let's change the colour. So I'm going to circle the columns and have a think about answering that question as I'm circling them. So there are mm, columns. Well done, year two. So there are four columns. And how many pairs are inside each column on our array? Well done, there are two pairs inside each column. So if we were to write that as repeated addition, be two, you can join in with me, add two, add two, add two, which again equals eight pairs altogether. Brilliant. So how many columns can you see? There are four columns. And we're going to write it in the opposite order to last time. Last time we wrote two times four. So this time we're going to begin from four instead and write four times two equals eight. So as you can see again, the multiplication has just been written in the opposite order to represent the columns instead of the rows. So let's say this last stem sentence together. There are eight pairs. Well done, year two. Okay, so moving on, you can see step two questions to solve in your book. So 2a says write two additions and two multiplications for the array. So again, you may choose to draw that array in your book so that you can circle the rows and the columns. Or you may choose to do it with your finger in the air. On 2b, it says write two multiplications for this array. So particularly think about how multiplication is commutative and the factor pairs can be written in either order. Well done, you two. Okay, so we're going to move on to exploring step three together now. It says draw an array to show five times three. So looking at that symbol, I'm going to read it again as five lots of three. Okay, so it says, is there more than one way to draw the array? Okay, so I'm going to first of all draw it as four lots of three. So I'm going to draw five lots of three. So that's one lot of three. Can you see I've got one row? I'm going to draw two 
lots of three, so I've got a second row. I wonder if you could pause the video here and carry on this array to show five lots of threes. So have a go in your book or on your whiteboard in the classroom. Well done, year two. So let's have a look at finishing this array together. So we've got one lot of three, two lots of three, three lots of three, four lots of three, you can join in with me, five lots of three. Brilliant. So as you can see, as I hover my pen, we're looking at the rows here. Okay, we don't always need to circle on the arrays, just like you saw at the, on the questions you've been answering already. It still represents five lots of three, even without the grouping around each row. Okay, so that's one way of showing five lots of three in an array. But coming back to the commutative rule, multiplication is commutative. What is the other way of writing this multiplication sentence? Well done, we can write it as three times five, okay? So I wonder if you could pause the video here and have a go at drawing another array to still show five lots of three or three lots of five. Well done, you two. So let's have a look together now. So we want to show three lots of five. So I'm going to draw three rows with five dots in each row. So you count with me. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. We have one lot of five. One, two, three, four, five. Two lots of five. One, two, three, four, five. Three lots of five. So again, looking at the rows here, we can see three lots of five. Brilliant. So what is the total of three lots of five or five lots of three? Well done, you two. So shall we complete this multiplication together? Five times three equals 15. So I'm make sure I've got one digit per square. Brilliant. So the product of five and three is 15. Well done. So on your screen now, you should be able to see step three questions. So as you can see, most of your time will be spent here this morning as there are four questions, which is really exciting. So on 3a, it says draw an array to show seven times three and complete the number sentence. Is there more than one way to draw the array? Explain. So this might be where you want to use that fancy word we've been practicing um, in your explanation. For 3b, it says draw three different arrays to show 12, which reminds me that when we drew our arrays on the last slide, there is one more way. Pause the video here and have a conversation. What is the other way we can draw this array to show the total 15? Well done, you two. We can show um, the total of five lots of three by, of course, showing one times 15. So I'm just going to get pen ready and can you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Brilliant. So we can have one times fifteen. There are three different ways to draw in a way to, um, to show 12. On 3C, there is a table, but please don't worry about drawing the table, okay? It says draw dots to show each multiplication in two ways. So similar to what we've just been practicing together. So please write the multiplication and draw 
both the rays underneath, so don't worry about drawing a table. And the 3D, it says, can you see the multiplications four times five? And sorry, five times four and four times five in the array. So have a conversation about it with a partner in school or with the adult helping you at home. Have fun, year two. Well done, year two. So on the screen now, you'll be able to see the answers. So please pause on the page that you need as you review your learning together at home. Well done. I really look forward to seeing your amazing maths work on Class Dojo. Take care, year two.